Lake Cross coverage of the 2018 Southwest Ohio Swim Classic made possible by the Cincinnati Auto Expo, SwimMeet.com, Mason Swimming Boosters, and the Seven Hills School. Welcome to the Southwest Ohio Swim Classic. You're looking at Keating Natatorium on the campus of St. Xavier High School in Cincinnati, Ohio, where we have the 2018 Classic Finals, day two. The Classic is the largest high school swim meet in the world, That's let alone correct. the United States. 3,041 athletes competing at 10 preliminary sites. The best of the best, the top 16, come from all over the region to swim here tonight at historic Keating Natatorium. Mike, both divisions, Division One and Division Two, swimming is represented here. So we have athletes that don't always get to swim against each other in dual meets, but here's an opportunity for everyone to swim together. And what what that means is the state tournament is divided into two divisions, basically a large school division and a smaller school division. And but this is the only time that all the kids in the in the Southwest Ohio will swim together, and it's a huge meet. I mean, my it God, is. the logistics of ten prelim sites, swimming and diving, is monumental. And the, it's all done by the Ohio, by the Southwest Ohio Officials Association. They're all volunteers. No one's making money on this. It's just for the betterment of of the sport of swimming and high school swimming in particular. Tremendous event. Now the Classic has a scholarship uh, program where they award uh, scholarships to about six people and we are going to join in on the ceremony of who's winning these, who on the recipients being awarded these scholarships for college. ...to award the scholarships to our 2018 winners. Before I do that, I would like to acknowledge Liz Keating, daughter of Bill Keating, Joe Keating, son of Bill Keating, and Bill's wife, Joan Keating. Many of you may know Bill passed away this year. Bill was a champion for the sport of swimming. He was instrumental in setting up the Friends of the Classic Foundation which is the parent organization for the Southwest Classic. Please refer to your heat sheets for some more detailed information on the Friends of the Classic scholarship program. Since its inception, we have given away approximately 70 scholarships to seniors who have swum and participated in the Classic, as well as uh, participating in many, many other activities, both inside and outside their schools. Bill was not only a friend of high school swimming, but he was a leader and advocate for women's sports and disabled athletes. He was one of the driving forces for hosting a national Paralympic swimming event at the University of Cincinnati. Bill was tireless in his efforts uh, to promote swimming at all levels. Bill Keating Jr. was active in community, academic, and athletic programs for his entire year. As a former competitive swimmer at St. X, UC Athletic Hall of Famer, he continued to give back to the sport as a volunteer coach for St. X and elder high schools. He also served as a high school and college swim official. Bill officiated numerous high school swimming championships and NCAA Division I Women's Swimming Championships. 
Having grown up training and competing at Keating Auditorium, Bill understood the importance of this facility and the opportunities it created for young swimmers. Over the years, he has raised $1.5 million to keep Keating Auditorium up and running so meets like the Classic can be hosted here. Bill was a passionate volunteer for the Classic, serving as an official and also a member of the scholarship committee. All the great swimmers who have committed, competed at this meet will remember being interviewed by Bill for TV after they won their event. In honor of Bill Keating and to help continue his leg legacy, we're going to be naming the Friends of the Classic Scholarship the William Keating Friends of the Classic Memorial Scholarship. In high school, Bill and I competed against each other. In life, I'm proud to say we were teammates. Kathy Kirstein will now introduce the 2018 William Keating Friends of the Classic Scholarship winners. Thank you. Our first recipient is Laramie Reed. Laramie attends Northeastern High School and has relied on swimming to improve her mood. She also cherishes the important people in her life that swimming has introduced her to. Although Laramie has already been swimming for 10 years before entering high school, as a freshman, she noticed that swimming wasn't truly recognized as a sport at her small school, and she wanted to change that. Making it to the state meet that first year helped her begin to improve that point of view. Some of her accomplishments include serving as secretary of the Future Farmers of America, 4-H Club, the National Honor Society. She's competed in the classic district and state meets for the three previous years and has helped build the school's team. Laramie will attend and swim for Western Illinois University, majoring in agriculture sciences. Congratulations, Laramie. Our second female is Kirsten Cassidy. Kirsten of Waynesville High School was introduced to the pool water at age six months and asked to be on the big kids team at five. Her extracurricular activities include being a team ambassador for the Victoria Theater Association, vice president of the National Honor Society, co-president of the Foreign Language Club, a captain of her high school team, secretary of the Astronomy Club, and a member of the Student Le Leadership Council and Student Advisor Council. She's been a top eight finalist at state for the last three years. Kirsten has already been accepted as an early decision applicant to swim for Carnegie Mellon University, where she's planning a double major in biomedical engineering and material science engineering with a minor in Spanish. Congratulations, Kirsten. Our final female recipient is Shannon Jelly.
Shannon is from King's High School. She stepped into a leadership role as one of the captains of the swim team. She organized team bonding activities such as watching scary movies at Halloween and a Christmas cookie exchange. She and the other captains also made locker signs for all of the team members before the first meet. Extracurricular activities include student council, math team, National Honor Society, lifeguarding at Countryside Y, and fellowship of Christian athletes. Shannon plans to swim for Rice University while majoring in chemical engineering. Congratulations, Shannon. The first of our male recipients is Cole McGinnis. Cole attends Walnut Hills High School. Although he got to attend, experience many other sports as a child, he chose swimming. He stated in his essay that swimming practices are therapeutic, helping him to focus, relieve stress, and stay a disciplined student. Volunteering has been an important part of Cole's life, serving four years at Good Samaritan Hospital and as a tutor at school. He has also served as a team leader at UC Science Camp and been a lifeguard at Coney Island. Cole has applied to several universities but he hopes to go to Northwestern University to major in neurosciences. Congratulations, Cole. <laughs> Nicholas Chepakaitis. Nicholas has been a three-year varsity member of the St. X swim and dive team, as well as a member of the state champion water polo program. According to his essay, Nick said that swimming found him during his sixth grade year, and that it has taught him strength, discipline, and time management. He was elected a team captain this year, and has received awards such as First Team All-Ohio Water Polo, Swimmer of the Year GCCL. He's also in the National Honor Society and the National Spanish Honor Society. Nick volunteers at Children's Hospital in their Transitional Integration Program and the Free Store Food Bank. Nick has committed to swim at Denison University with a possible major in international business. Congratulations, Nicholas. Ryan Hunt. Ryan began swim team competition at age eight. He attends Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy where he has also played lacrosse and run cross country, performed in the jazz band and been the conductor of the football pep band for one year. He is in the National Honor Society, serving as treasurer, a writer for the school newspaper, 
the champion of the Rose Hullman Math Competition and a National Merit semifinalist. Ryan has applied to several schools, but he hopes to attend Purdue University, majoring in chemical engineering. Congratulations, Ryan. Please give all of our recipients a loud congratulatory applause. Well, there are the this year's Friends of the Classics Scholarship Award recipients, all six very impressive and all wonderful, I'm sure, well-qualified student athletes. Yes, out of the 3,000 that are participating here, these six individuals uh, have earned this honor. You can see the proud families there behind them. Without the parents' support, all their accomplishments uh, would not be possible. There's a very nice tribute to Bill Keating as well, Mike. Absolutely. Billy Keating was a wonderful, wonderful ambassador of swimming in this town for many years. And, of course, his family, just tremendous, huge, tremendous supporters of the sport of swimming. Obviously, the facility that we're in, as well as the University of Cincinnati's facility, would be a good example of that. Had the opportunity, as my club team trains uh, somewhat at University of Cincinnati, that um, he uh, was coaching with uh, Elder High School and had a lot of interaction with Bill there, as well as having him uh, interview many of our champions over the 22 years that you and I have been doing this. He was uh, one of the first people uh, that I got to know when we started doing these broadcasts. So always friendly, man. always positive, a huge supporter of everybody in this town. He was. He was a great man. And really, I mean, it was so sad. He was here a year ago. Yep. And then it, uh, it, three months later or four months later, yeah, very, I think April, I think I was at Y Nationals. It was, it was, a, qu it was a very quick illness. And, and um, you know, even, even as he was ill, he would uh, do the best he could to come and and be involved with the events. And just um, an honor to have, have known Bill and it's a tremendous, tremendous legacy. Well, like you said, this is Keating Meditorium, named right. after his family, and it's Keating Aquatic Center. And I think that that really, Billy was the big main purpose of that. Sure. Of course, a, a huge supporter of the University of Cincinnati, and obviously a swimmer himself, right. and I'm a member of the. Uh, UC swim team uh, back in the day, but I was wondering that the UC needed a new facility. They had an old, outdated facility, and now they have a beautiful 50-meter pool uh, that, that a lot of people train in, and a lot of and it really solved the the uh, gap of, of training space in this city. It, it, it solved helpful. a huge problem. It, it has been a great, great setting for for. You know, the Cincinnati Aquatic Club trains there and Elder, and I know that your program has gone in there at times when you've had facility mm, yes. issues. Lots of, you know, Mason has used that facility. Um, so lots of teams that have been able to benefit from the Cincinnati area. And now we're getting ready for the national anthem.
nicely done. All right. We are ready to go. We're gonna start off with some swim offs. There were some ties for either eighth or 16th, but they were, they were uh, from different prelim locations, so they couldn't be resolved at the prelim site, so they'll be done tonight before the first regular meets. And we have two of them. The first one is the 50-yard butterfly. In lane four, John Specker from Cincinnati LaSalle, and lane five, Jack Putnick from St. X. And this is definitely a mad dash. Two links of the pool butterfly. You see a tremendous effort given to the underwaters. Now the tide, they tied at the time of 25-62. Most of the time in swim offs, you see both swimmers swim a little faster. Let's see if it that's is, the case. This, this is an exciting time. And, and that is almost always the case. We'll see how much faster they were. 25-62 this morning. And St. X. Looks like Jack Putnick. Putnick goes a 24-43. So <laughs> 1.2 seconds faster, which is unbelievable. And that's, that's just four tenths faster for John Specker. So we yes. will see Putnick later on tonight. Somewhere. We may we're see sure. both. We may yeah, see we both. See but both. We're, we're, not we're not really sure. sure what positions we're swimming off for. And we, we have another one, off. Mike. This is girls 50-yard backstroke in lane four, Sarah. Hippenmeyer of Centerville and lane five, Katie Kaminsky of Anderson. And Sarah got a bit of a lead off of her underwater fly kick. She will turn first right there to the right of your screen. And she is pulling away. And you can see she's suited. I wonder if that's a change from this morning. And 28.56. <laughs> Nearly two seconds faster on that 50 than this morning. Nice two second drop from this morning. And now we will have the first scheduled event. That would be event 201, girls 200 yard medley relay. Heat one, Seven Hills. Heat two, Walnut Hills. Heat three, Springboro. Heat four, I'm sorry, lane four, Cincinnati, Wyoming. Lane five, Archbishop Alter. Lane six, Turpin High School. Lane seven, Bishop Fenwick, and lane eight, Springfield Catholic Central. Emma Schubert from Seven Hills got off to a very fast start at the top of the screen. You can see from Seven Hills, really good work underwater. Lane three, Maggie Clough also. Dottie Callard, Seven Hills, Breaststroke. Abby Lockett. Abby Lock from Springboro doing the breaststroke leg and she's pulled ahead. And Nikki Lambert will be the flyer for Springboro. And they have a commanding lead. Now lane five, Alter in second. Audrey Saran. Still holding the lead. That's Springboro in lane three, the commanding lead. Alter is in second, but now here comes lane seven, Bishop Finwood, Anna Baker coming up. And Springboro with a commanding lead. And seven. 
Emily Olson in lane seven is going to get second, but winning the heat, Springboro. 149-33, Springboro, 23-7, anchor leg by Hannah Hill. Finishing second was Alter, 153-62. And in third, Seven Hills, 154-17. All right, for finals, our first finals championship final heat tonight. Lane one, Beaver Creek. Lane two, Kings. Lane three, Centerville. Lane four, St. Ursula. Lane five, Mason. Lane six, Ursuline Academy. Lane seven, Dayton Oakwood. And lane eight, Marymont. Ursuline Academy holds the record at 146.80, set in 2012. Slavey, Blood, Jenkins, and Tomlin. Mike, this is a high school contested event. It's the first meet of any high school dual meet across the starts, country. Starts with this race. And immediately in lane eight. That's Cora Dupree with a very good explosive underwater. She's going to have a big lead out in the outside smoke right there. You see in the bottom of your screen. It's hard to see from that angle. There it is. Lane eight currently leading. Kate Oberbay. Brooke Wallert will be the fly leg for Marymont. Now coming up in lane five. Lane five, that's Trina Akram. And still Marymont holding on. And Laney Newman will be the anchor for Marymont. Lane five, Hannah Mizwa. Mason has now taken a slight lead. Newman in second for Marymont. Mason gets the victory, 146-17. And they take down the record from 19, or 2012 by Ursuline. Marymont holds on for second, 147-36. And finishing third, oh, we had a tie for second, Mike. Centerville, or no, I'm sorry, uh, St. Ursula, 147-36, ties with Marymont. That brings us to the boys, 200 medley relay, swimming in heat one, lane one, Marymont, lane two, Kings, lane three, Sycamore, lane four, Lakota West, lane five, Walnut Hills, lane six, Wyoming, lane seven, Butler, lane eight, Springboro. And a clean start. Lane three out to a very good start. Carson Foster. Absolutely, absolutely explosive. Carson. Carson 22-72. If they kept track of things, that would be 
more than likely the classic 50 back record for a relay for sure. Luke Tinbarge, the breaststroker. Walnut Hills coming up. Sycamore still holding the slight lead, but Walnut Hills chasing. Isaiah Valentine from Walnut Hills. Noah Patterson holding the lead. Elliot Carl, son of the coach at Sycamore. And he's trying to hold off Walnut. A little shallow off his turn. And it looks like Sycamore is going to hold off. Walnut's going to finish second. 135.99 for Sycamore. Walnut, 136.57. And Lakota West finishes third, 137.66 to the championship final heat. That brings us to heat two of the boys 200 medley relay, lane one, seven hills, lane two, Mason, Lane three, Archbishop Muller. Lane four, St. Xavier. Lane five, Bellbrook. Lane six, Centerville. Lane seven, Beaver Creek. And lane eight, Milford. And last year, the record was set by St. Xavier. Grinder, Charles Leibson, Sobolinski, and Grant House. 131.93 is the current record. Saw Justin do a good job yesterday leading off Xavier's 400 medley, so we'll see what we get. Last night in the two free relay, he split the year I was born, 1964. That was a pretty good split. Anchor split for 50 freestyle. I'm going to remember that a, a long little known time. Fact, I'm going to remember that a long time. I'm, I'm sure First time will. I've ever seen that. I'm a, high memory in, association I'm a high school by Mike. swimmer in the middle of a season. Yes, that's pretty impressive. 23-2, his dad told me he's going to Virginia. So that's uh, going to be a good location for him. 23 John Pierre taking off there. 26-3 on our bus trick split. Xavier in command. Lane five, Bellbrook. Cody Bybee, who's a tremendous sprint sprinter from Dayton. And he closed the gap a bit, but not enough. Nicholas Prara. Outstanding I Emmer anchoring for Xavier. Just a bit off. 132.94. Nine tenths off the record. Mowers tie Mowers. Anchor split 20.6, and that would be uh, Austin Murray. And they finished second with a time 136.05. Third place was, went to Bellbrook at that time of 136.72. Some very exciting relays there, Mike. Okay, girls, 1650 freestyle. 
one heat, a time final event. Swimming in lane one, Jillian Rice of Indian Hill. Lane two, Allison Capistassi, Turpin. Lane three, Nicola Lane, Centerville. Lane four, Lucy Callard of Seven Hills. Lane five, Liz Corin of Centerville. Lane six, Gail Workman, Turpin. Lane seven, Tara Witkowski. Lane eight, Sam Auditor of Dayton Oakwood. We will start this race, get into a good rhythm, and then we'll take a little break and we'll rejoin it at the end of the race. But we're gonna watch the first two or 300 of this race and then we'll come back to it the last two or 300. Maybe have some interviews also. Looks like we're, we'll have some interviews during the race. Typically this race will be about 17 minutes for, for the girls. Right, the record's held by Allison Feely at 1641. Uh, Lucy Callard's time of 16.33.7 is under that, but it's a uh, rested performance. So right now they would be tired. All the athletes would be fatigued from holiday training. So we'll see how uh, how they're able to navigate this mile. 66 links of the pool. Very important that they develop a rhythm early. And then as they get to the seven, eight, nine, even a thousand mark, they can determine whether they need to push or hold. And then they close out their race. It's very important that they evaluate as they're swimming their energy level. They're getting into a good rhythm right here. You can see uh, a lot of different gates. Oftentimes you'll see distance swimmers have a, a, a looping stroke when they take their breath which is not always uh, the preference of the coaches, but you'll see a lot of distance swimmers that do that. And we don't have too much of that going on right now. And we'll go through a, another couple yeah. of hundred. I believe we're ready for an interview here. Tegan Morvac, she's a senior at uh, Mount, Nader Mount Notre Dame Academy, and you won the diving uh, finals today for the Southwest Ohio Classic. So tell me, how does that feel? Uh, it feels really great. Um, I had a pretty solid meet, so you know I'm just glad you know to have a good meet and you know to take a win for the team and stuff. So give us a quick recap. How did it go? Like, what was your best dive? How were you feeling throughout the throughout the meet? Um, I was actually more nervous than I thought I was going to be, but my best dive was my front two and a half pike. Um, I don't know, just got a really great hurdle, got a good start, and I just put that in for good score. That's great. And so now what's next for you? What's your next diving competition for the year? Um, I have GGCLs um, later this month uh, at Sycamore for Mountain Notre Dame. And then after that? Uh, sectionals and districts and then state. Okay. And where are you headed to uh, college next year? Uh, I'll be diving for Virginia Tech. All right. Good luck and congratulations on your victory. And we are back watching it. Uh, Liz Korn currently leads, followed by Nicola, Nicola Lane and Lucy Caller. And it is a very, very tight field right now between those three. Nicola Lane has taken a slight edge over Liz Corrin. Callard right on their hip. Now Lucy, she's got to decide who sh whose hip she wants to get onto. <laughs> Good job cinching off the wall. And it's time for us to uh, go to uh, a break. No, interview. Oh, well, we've got an interview now. And we'll come back to this race in a moment. Noah Vigran, he's a senior at Indian Hill. He's the winner of the boys diving. Noah, congratulations. Tell us a little bit about your diving today. Well, thank you. Uh, I thought I had a pretty good meet today, so I was very happy about that. I got off to a pretty good start and then just kept it going throughout the rest of the meet. So I felt really good. Obviously, you did what it took to win. Were your scores what you expected? Yeah, I think that the things that I did well on, I got the scores that I deserved, so I was really happy about that. 
And you got an important win for Indian Hill. Yeah, I was very pumped to get a win for Indian Hill. Now you're headed to Stanford next year. You're going to die for the Cardinal. Tell us about that decision. Stanford's always been a place that I've wanted to go. So I was super stoked to get the opportunity to sign and dive there. And I'm very excited to get out to California the next four years and see what I can do. Well, congratulations on your win and congratulations on your plans next year. Thank you. And we're back. And again, currently Nicola Lane leads, followed by Liz Corrin and Lucy Callard. Those are your top three. And we'll take a break and rejoin this race momentarily. Lake Cross coverage of the 2018 Southwest Ohio Swim Classic, made possible by the Cincinnati Auto Expo. Swimmeet.com. Mason Swimming Boosters. And the Seven Hills School. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. There's just one place where a team is more than a group of individual agendas. It's a catalyst for demonstrating the potential of the collaborative spirit. There's just one place where players, coaches, and fans experience the exhilaration that happens when an entire community rallies behind the school team. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. In addition, high school sports help young people in Ohio develop the discipline and confidence they need to be leaders in life, even as they unite communities like nothing else. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. And we're back to the class okay. where we're joining in in the girls 1650. And as when we left you, we, we've had a lead change since then. Nicola Lane was in the lead and Liz Quarren, and now Lucy Callard has taken the lead. And she's averaging about 102s per 100, a little under that. That's right. And Lucy started out very smooth, good rhythm. You can see there she has a good extension off her walls. Pulls bottom arm, brief second stroke. And Lucy is a, a very good miler. Also swims fly very well. Backstroke. And she'll be going to Duke next year. And she celebrated her 18th birthday yesterday. That's right. So it's a good weekend for Lucy. Good rhythm right there. You can see she's saving her legs. Nice and smooth. There's a two-beat kick. Lucy does a very good job of controlling her races early and bringing them home. Lane there in second. Followed by Corrin in third. The pace to break the record would be right around 005. So she'll be a little bit off of that, but this is still going to be a very good time. As Mike indicated, about 17 minutes. He's holding 31 flats right now. There's the 102s. Nice even rhythm. Here's Nicola. Nicola's Nicola. 
Nicola is holding 32 fives. Liz is holding 32 fours. She's on pace to go just over 17 minutes here. 15-32-57 at the 1,500, 150 to go. <laughs> about a 1703 here she brings it home and Lucy Callard will win this race Seventeen oh four eleven, good solid swim. Seventeen twenty four ninety nine. Liz Corn's going to get. Third, 17.32.09. Jillian Rice finishes fifth in lane one outside. 17.37.04. Uh, so very, very good uh, solid swims out of all those young ladies. We still have a couple of competitors finishing up here. Sixth place. Samantha Auditor. And now we have the boys version. On the boys side, we have lane one, Jason Allen, a sophomore from Beaver Creek. Lane two, Michael Griffith of Troy. Lane three, Allen Flower of Centerville. Lane four, Grady Wheeler, St. X. Lane five, Sam Fallon, St. X. Lane six, Will Osterman, St. X. Lane seven, Cameron Rutz of Kings. Lane eight, Will Taylor of Indian Hill. Now on the guy's side, this will be about 16 minutes, right around 16 minutes. Uh, Justin's uh, dad told me that he's a sprinter. 
So uh, the fact that he went 15-19 last year at this meet to crush the record, uh, I tried to say, well, you know, he could still swim the mile. Uh, <laughs> but he does do a great job with his sprints. There's been a lot of sp swimmers over the years uh, nationally who got their first uh, you know, senior national qualifying time in the mile and ended up being sprinters. So it's not an uncommon current occurrence. You can see right now that they're establishing their rhythm. And as we know, like we saw in the, sec in the last race with the girls, it's not so important who's leading early as long as you are swimming the race that you need to swim. We grab Grady Wheeler in lane four, Sam Fallon in lane five, right there together. And over in lane six, Will Osterman, all St. Xavier swimmers. And Sam Fallon has the early lead. Now Grady should slide over on his hip. Stay with him. If he goes by him, he should move to the other side of the lane. And you can see there, that's what he's doing. And straight down the middle. Now Grady is uh, pulled slightly ahead and he's moving over the other side. Some of that may just be the natural circling. It's hard to get athletes that circle and practice to understand that that's not what they want to do in a meet. Well, that's just, it's just so much time of doing that. Yep. Natural repetition, the muscle memory, everything. Not just unconsciously do it. Distance swimmers have to be aware of where they are in relationship to their competitors. Unless they're just absolutely blowing them out. Now, Grant, uh, now uh, Grady has taken a lead, and he should stay on the opposite side of the lane if he's going to hold that rhythm and pace. He should stay to the far side. And he's circling just his touch. He's pretty, pretty straight up and down the black line right now. All three boys, I'm sure, are pretty accustomed to training together. And we're, uh, it looks like we're going to have setting up for an interview. And as we go to the interview, Grant, Grady Wheeler still leading. He is the winner of the men's 200 breaststroke. He's a sophomore from St. Xavier High School. Scott, tell us a little bit about your swim. Uh, I was very happy with it. Uh, I know 200 breast is not a high school event, but I think it's a good signal about how my 100 breast is going to go this year. Well, and you're just a sophomore. St. Xavier High School has a, a rich tradition uh, at this meet and at states. What are your goals for the rest of the season? Um... Maybe not this season, but eventually I want to win 100 breaststroke. I think this year I can place very well in it. I know Jason Matthews has some very tough competition in that. Um, but we're going to go after it, and hopefully time-wise, 54 low would be my goal. And how does this meet fit into your team goals this year? Um, it's a great meet to uh, decide state lineups. We decide a lot of state lineups based on this meet. Um, so 100 breasts is probably going to be for me. And we have the 200 IM today, which I'm looking forward to. Um, maybe we can get a state spot in that, too. Well, congratulations on your 200 breaststroke, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Okay, and as we return, see Grady still holding a slight edge. And we'll be going to going to black here in a moment and we'll pick this race up again about four to five hundred yards to go this is what matters this is beyond x's and o's this is the difference mutual respect makes this is what character looks like this is what defines us in ohio this is sportsmanship school sports it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. 
This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Waycross coverage of the 2018 Southwest Ohio Swim Classic made possible by the Cincinnati Auto Expo. Swimmeet.com. Mason Swimming Boosters. And the Seven Hills School. And we're back. You can see we've got Grady Wheeler leading. Right there in lane four. Sam Fallon right on his hip. And starting to come up on Grady. It's been a very close race. They're splitting 28. 28-8. And Sam is really picking up his tempo. 28-5 right there. Grady has led for the majority of the race. And it's going to be a battle. The Sam is uh, starting to feel it. You can see he needs to move over there on Grady's hip. Grady's trying to stay away from it. And Grady's holding 28-8, Sam 28-7. It's a good race. And third, Will Osterman. About half a pool length behind the fellows. Sam is starting to feel like he's got a shot. He can sense that he's pulling up a bit. Grady's trying to battle and hold him off. 28-7, 28-4. Sam surged on that 50. Gained four tenths of a second. It's a great race. have a 200 to go when they turn here at this wall. You can see right there, it's gonna be a battle, the last 200. Grady still holding a slight edge, but Sam feeling it. Can Grady respond? They're both good competitors. Grady fell off on that 29-0, Sam 28-3. Sam's got some momentum. And he's getting uh, even. Trying to surge past. Grady fighting him off. And Grady responded there with a 28-8. Sam 28-5. Sam looks like he's taking a slight lead. Grady is battling, trying to battle back. What a great race, Mike. What a great race. Stroke for stroke for a long way. It is a great race. A lot of people you know, don't look forward to this thing, but this is the best situation yes, here. This these, is, both these guys are going to have great times. It's going to come down to who wants it the most, basically. They're dead heat right now. A tenth separating them. Both holding 28-6, 28-5. Who's got the legs coming home? Now Grady has surged back up, and they are exactly even. Grady, looks like he's surging forward. It's the bell lap. Last 20, last 50 sprint. Who wants it? Grady's putting it down. Here comes Sam. They flip, Grady a slight edge. They're driving to the finish. It's gonna come down to the touch. Grady pulling slightly ahead. And it's going to be Grady Wheeler with the victory. 15.45.62. That's Grady's best time. Sam, 15.45.74. 12 one hundreds separated them. 12 one hundreds.
That is a great race. That was a great race. Back and forth. Sam took the lead. And here is the Here's finish. Replay. You can see him battling. And Grady is a fierce competitor, so is Sam. And Grady gets the touch out right there. And he was pumped, you could tell. <laughs> yeah, I'd say he was. Had a good swim right there. These guys work hard. <laughs> they want their moments. They're getting their moment. And he gets his picture taken here in a moment. We will see him interviewed tonight by, by our interviewers, April Curley or Meredith Griffin. Again, you're watching the Ohio Southwest Ohio High School Classic meet. I'm Mike Leonard along with Benson Sperling, Coach Meredith Griffin, and April Curley. And we just completed the, the first two miles, the women's mile, men's mile. Now we go to the girls 200 IM and our heat one. Swimmers, lane one, Meredith Wolf of Mason. Lane two, Emma Schubert of Seven Hills. Lane three, Kirsten Cassidy of Waynesville. Lane four, Meredith Mollering of St. Ursula. Lane five, Allie Blaybaum of Mason. Lane six, Naomi Edge of Beaver Creek. Lane seven, Reese Lugville of Mason. And lane eight, Hannah Check, Lakota East. Okay, Mike, this 200 IM is also a high school contested event. Records held by Jenny Forcer back in 2005, time of 201.15. Out to the early lead, that's Allison Bluebaum. And now Meredith Mullering from St. Ursula has uh, surged ahead on the backstroke just a touch. We've got a good battle straight across there. Lanes one and two. Meredith Wool from Mason and Emma Schubert. Came up on the backstroke in lane one and two. And they now have a slight lead and out in lane eight. Hannah Check out of Lakota East. And down at the bottom of the screen. Hard to see her. There she is. Lane two, Emma Schubert. Seven Hills. She's got a slight edge. Hannah Check out in lane eight, in second. Mollering in third. Going to come down to the finish here. Good battle on the freestyle leg. Got to have a great seventh turn. Two hundreds are made with a great seventh turn. Here they come, battling to the finish. Put your head down. And the win goes to Mollering. No, wait. Blue bomb, blow bomb gets the Allie victory. Allie Blaybomb, 209 43. 209 57 for second. And Hannah Check finishes third, 210 36 in the consolation heat. Now to the finals. Swimming in lane one, Pruitt Walter, Centerville. Lane two, Issa All, Dayton Oakwood. Lane three, Mackenzie Grau, Mason. Lane four, Hannah Foster. St. Ursula, lane five, Kate Lair, Alter. Lane six, Lauren Thomas Mason. Lane seven, Maggie Clough, Springboro. Lane eight, Ashley Volkerding, St. Ursula. Okay, Hannah Foster had our top seed this morning, 
Hannah Foster, the senior from St. Ursula. She certainly had a nice career. Absolutely. And she's uh, very versatile. Good, strong eye ever. Let's see where she can go here. Dead heat right here, right together, the whole group. And Hannah taking a slight edge right now. Touches the wall in 27-31. Followed by Maggie Club from Springboro out in lane seven. Clough with a slight lead going into that wall on the back straight, right there at the bottom of your screen. Lane seven, there you go, right there. And let's see how many of these young ladies do back to breast crossover turns. Lane four did, Hannah did, several did. Very tight race. Breaststroke, Hannah, a strong breaststroker starting to pull ahead. Here comes Katie Lair from Alter. Lane five right beside her, you can see there. But underwater pullouts, Hannah with about a half a body length lead. Here comes Kate, lane five, trying to catch her. We come down to the freestyle leg. And they're very even, one tenth separating them. And Lair came off that wall really well, good breakout. And see if Hannah can respond. Katie used a lot of momentum coming off that turn. And is pulling away. Katie Lair, sophomore, alter, going to get the victory for the time of 205.86. Hannah Foster could say second place finish with 207.06. Finishing third, Isa All from Dayton Oakwood. The senior gets third with a time of 207.79. That takes us to the boys, 200 IM. Swimming in lane one, Tyler Babinek. Lane two, Dan Cashel. Lane three, Aaron Scaquera. Lane four, Jonathan Bernard. Lane five, Noah Young. Lane six, Michael Sander. Lane seven, Calvin Wise. And lane eight, Dawson Lutz. Mike, the meet records held by Cooper Hodge, set in 2016 with a time of 149.83. Up in lane six, Michael Sander from Springboro. Uh, with the first third of the lead at 24-1. Very strong first leg of his race. Now in lane five, surging. That's Noah Young from Kings Mill. And he's taking a command off of that. Now we've got Aaron Sequera out of Walnut Hills, a sophomore, who's in second. Five, Noah Young he did a back flip on his back to breast turn. Aaron in lane threes come up on the breaststroke. Young in second. See Aaron in lane three has now taken the lead. Try to bring it home. Michael Sander coming up in lane six. It's a good battle. Lane three and five. Flipped even. And come down to the finish. And 
Michael Sanders wins a 154.03. Aaron gets second at 54.42. And up for third, Dan Cashel with a strong last link, last 50, 155.56. 27.04 for Cashel. Brought it home well. Lucy Callard, a senior at Seven Hills. She's the winner of the 1650 freestyle. Congratulations, Lucy. You were holding just around 30, 31 the whole way. Was that your plan? Uh, yeah, the plan was kind of to go out however I felt and then really kind of build the whole way. So right kind of after the first 500, I really started to pick it up. Uh, I saw the two girls ahead of me and really kind of tried to make my move then because it was kind of now or never. Is that, from a racing standpoint, it's such a long race, you kind of took off on the girls about the midpoint and never looked back. Is that part of your strategy? Oh, uh, yeah. Coming right out of the relay, uh, I was a little, I was still, my heart rate was pretty high at the beginning, so I wanted to kind of feel the water on the first 500 and then really take off around the middle. A nice win for a senior, nice win for Seven Hills. You're headed to Duke next year. What are your thoughts on this, your final classic? Um, it's good to kind of go out on top. Uh, I've had so many great coaches and teammates who have helped me along the way so this is kind of for them uh, I'm really lucky to be here um, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season well congratulations and good luck thank you Okay, the uh, heat two of the boys, 200 IM, lane one, Scott Sobolewski, lane two, Sam McCarthy, lane three, Kevin Liebold, lane four, Connor Blatt, lane five, Ansel Froas, lane six, Ian Van Gorp, lane seven, Adam Cheney, and lane eight, Tinder Sear. And Connor Blatt, our top qualifier, 153.98, has a slight lead, but in lane seven, Adam Cheney, has just taken over the lead with a very strong backstroke play. Connor Blatt battling back. Now in lane six, Ansel Foss. I'm sorry, lane five, and right there together. You can see Connor Blatt still holding the lead. Dayton Carroll, Hansel Foss, Foss from St. Xavier, second. And Connor Blatt running away with it. He hammered a 32-4 on that, or 32-4 on that breaststroke. And he's really, really pounding the freestyle. And a time of 150. 2.15, Ansel gets second, 153.16, and Kevin LaBold, time of 154.84, so three very good IMers right there. And that takes us to the girls' 100-yard freestyle. Swimming in heat one, lane one, Eva Watts, Turpin, lane two, Madeline Hart. Turpin, lane three, Br Brina, Brina Wolf, Kings, lane seven, Liz Corin, Centerville, lane eight, Kiara Arkham, Ankum, Mason, lane seven, Caitlin Basic of Beaver Creek, lane eight, I'm sorry, lane seven, Emma Swab, Brookville, lane eight, Corinne Baber of Kings. Okay, the Hunter Freestyle, Cora Dupre. Uh, Corey Dupree last year went 50.52 to set the record. She is, we'll see her in the next heat. And we just saw Liz, Liz Corr in the top seat in this heat, just was in the mile, coming back in her double. That's a tough double. All right, quick start here. Looks like lane five, the early lead. Kira Ekram, Ekram. Here, still holding the lead. Lane 
two, Madeline Hart coming up. Sophomore from Turpin High. Kira. Lane five, holding the lead. She's going to get the victory with a time of 53-25. Finishing second, that's Madeline Hart, 54-11. And in third place, Brianna Wolf from Kings, 54-13. Heat two, lane one, Hannah Hill, Springboro. Lane two, McCleary Moran, Moran Dayton Chaminade Julienne. Lane three, Megan Glass, Ursuline. Lane four, Cora Dupree, Marymont. Lane five, Ashley Volkerding, St. Ursula. Lane six, Amy Fulmer, Bell Fountain. Lane seven, Grace Hastings, Anderson. And lane eight, Aubrey Whitaker of Mason. Cora Dupree, the record holder at 50.52 set last year. She's our top seed tonight. 52-57 this morning out of Milford. Milford side, she's off to a fast start. Has an early command, about a half a body length lead going into the first turn. Very tight for second, looks like lane six. Amy Fuller from Bell Fontaine. 23-8 for Cora going out. And she's going to win the race. And it's a battle for second, lane three coming up. Megan Glass, Ursuline yep. Academy. Will she get the record? It looks like it. 49.56. My goodness, that's a heck of a swim. Dropped a full, almost a full second, nine tenths faster than her record from last year. Second, Amy Fuller, 51.7. And Megan Glass gets third, 52.32. So another meet record for Cora Dupree, congratulations to her. She had a big smile on her face after that race. Should have a smile, it's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Boys 100 freestyle, heat one, lane one, Chase Fisher, Milford High School. Lane two, Nicholas Pfeiffer, St. X. Lane three, Scott Holcomb, St. X. Lane four, Joseph Pullman. Beaver Creek, lane five, John Sampson, Bellbrook. Lane six, Jorge Zelina, Dayton Chaminade, Julianne. Lane seven, Sammy Rizma, Sycamore. And lane eight, Owen Taylor, St. X. And not to sound repetitive, but we have uh, Cody Bybee coming up uh, in the next heat. He, like Cora, set the record last year at 44-91. We'll see if we can have back-to-back -back duplication there. But this race, Right now, we've got lane six, Jorge Zina from Dayton. Jorge Zelina. And now lane four, Joseph Pullman. Pullman. Pullman's coming up. And it looks like he's going to get the victory with a time of 47.04. Sampson, John Sampson finishes second. 
47-31. Right now we're going to an interview. Peters. I'm with Grady Wheeler, a junior at St. X High School, and you just won the mile. So tell me, how did it feel? Um, it felt pretty good. I tried to take it out a little bit more smooth than I normally would. I tried to back half the last 200, and I think I did that pretty well. Is this your first win in the 16 and 50? Yes, it is. And how does that make you feel? Uh, it was really nice. Uh, along with it, I got the winter junior cut. So that was really nice. And I look forward to swaying that in the winter, next winter. So is this going to be one of your events at, uh, the during the championship season? Yeah, it typically is. So like I, like I said, I look forward to swinging it again. And uh, hopefully, let's get that summer junior. Awesome. Congratulations. Good job tonight. Thank you. All right, Heat 2, Hunter Freestyle Boys, Heat 2. Lane 1, Nicholas. Shippakaitis. Thank you. Lane 2, Greg Kalen. Lane 3, Justin Grender. We saw him last night. Lane four, Cody Bybee, Bellbrook. Lane six, Nicholas Pereira. Lane seven, Austin Murphy. Lane eight, Adam Cheney, and lane not, I'm sorry, lane seven, Adam Cheney, lane eight, Sam Fallon. And Bybee out to early lead, chasing his record from last year, 49, 44-91. Scott Holcomb right on his hip. Bybee out, 21-3. He's got a shot at, at going under his record. Grinder, Justin Grinder right beside him. Bybee, half a body length. Oh, and it turned, and Cody gets the victory. And the record. And just under his record, 44 80, 44 84. 44 84, his record was 44. 91, so seven one hundredths under his previous record. Justin gets second with a 44-94, just off of what was the previous record. So two tremendous swims for, <laughs> for the high school classic. A couple of guys going, I mean, there's so many times 44 will win state. And it'll be interesting to see. Wonder if both those young men will be swimming that event be great love to see that that brings us to the girls 50 fly this is a JV event not swum in the high school or collegiate levels heat one lane one Katie Robinson lane two Megan Grill lane three Kennedy Brennan lane four Grace Zhang lane five on Nguyen lane six Maddie DeFilippio De De lane seven Avani Deshmuk and lane eight, Abby Kite. And lane four, Grace Zeng, Mason, sophomore, early lead. Put her head down, last six strokes, and she gets holds on for the console win, 28-18. And now to the final heat. Swimming in heat two, lane one, Izzy Evans. Lane two, Carolyn Rupp. Lane three, Ruchi Kudelkar. Lane four, Michaela Marquivas. Lane five, Abby Burton. Lane six, Tanvi Summit. Lane seven, Emma Neheisel. And lane eight, Callie Johnson. Emma Foreman holds the record at 26-36.
clean start. And that's lane four. Michaela. Senior from Princeton. She's going to lead start to finish. And she gets the victory, 27-07. Very nice swim. Victory for Princeton. That takes us to the boys, 50-yard butterfly. Heat one, lane one, Alex Gow. Lane two, Brian Ridner. Lane three, Shea Suggs. Lane four, Jack Putnick. Lane five, Justin Haley. Lane six, Aaron Polk. Lane seven, Tim Blankenship. And lane eight, Andrew Liu. Correction, lane four is John Specker. He lost the swim off. We'll see uh, Jack Putnick in the next heat. Tight field, too close to call. Lane three with a slight edge. Cameron, that would be uh, Shea Shrugs. Lane five now. Lane five gets the win. Justin Haley from Dakota West, a senior. 24-98. Okay, heat two, lane one, Jamie Donovan, St. X, lane two, Lucas Ecker, St. X, lane three, Cameron Eggsletter, St. X, lane four, Thomas Bat, Moeller, lane five, Emerson Amaguero, Moeller, lane six, Kyle McQuibus, Princeton, lane seven, Robert Call Me Bobby Profiter, St. X, lane seven, Jack Putnick. Emerson Emengaro. Record held by Bo Robinson, 2381. <laughs> And they're off. Lane five, Emerson with the early lead. Emerson and Murgo, 24-04. Victory goes to Moeller. Emerson Amagero. Amagero. And now we head to the girls 200 butterfly. Heat one, lane one, Anna McCarty, Dayton Oakwood. Lane two, Anna Volkerdine, St. Ursula. Lane three, Ileana Wright, Tip City Bethel. Lane four, Meredith Mollering, St. Ursula. Lane five, Peyton Farrell, Beaver Creek. Lane six, Maggie Sattler, Ursuline. Lane seven, Kiara Ankara, Mason. And lane eight, Tara Witkowski, Lakota East. Well, eight lengths of the pool butterfly, Benson. And the early lead here, Emma Wright, Tip City, Bethel. Out in a 009 at the 100. 
and see how the back half goes for that's a good strong first hundred Meredith Mollering St. Ursula Academy trying to give chase lane six Maggie Schlatter Ursuline Academy a senior in third right now is still holding the lead Elena Elena Wright right there is a good shot of her She has a commanding two and a half body length lead. Right, holding on. Can she, she be fatiguing a little bit? It's going to come down to this last lap. Good underwater right there. Breathing on the breakout. She's getting the oxygen. They're battling. They're trying to chase her, but she may have too big of a lead. Charging in lane five. Peyton Farrell. And she and Wright holds on 208 46. Peyton Farrell gets second 208 79 and to the championship finals. Swimming in lane one, Kirsten Cassidy of Waynesville. Lane two, Ali Blaybaum, Mason. Lane three, Lucy Callard, Seven Hills. Lane four, Margaret Bernie, Kettering Fairmont. Lane five, Megan Glass, Ursuline. Lane six, Leanna Wall, Mason. Lane seven, Kate Lair, Alter. Lane eight, Gail Workman of Turpin. And now we'll go to an interview. Connor Blatt is here. He's from Carroll High School in Dayton. He's the winner of the men's 200 IM. 152-1, that's a great time mid-season. How's that for you? Uh, it's one of my best time by a little bit. Very happy. Really worked hard to get out and win this when I saw I was seeing first, so I was really happy at the time. Oh, great win tonight. Great win for Carol. Uh -huh. You excited? What does that mean for your teammates? Uh, they'd be all really happy if uh, they were here. You know, it's a little hard for them to get down, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure they'll be watching when uh, when I get back and I can show them the race uh, on the broadcasts. They're, they've been all really uh, look up to me as a senior and someone who's really fast and a leader for them. So Connor, where are you going to take that leadership next year? Uh, I'm going to Eastern Michigan, uh, partial scholarship next year. Uh, really excited to keep swimming and keep getting better for the next four years. Congratulations and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. And they're off. And Mike in a stunning develop in the NFL. <laughs> And an amazing, amazing last play of the game. Minnesota throws a, a pass to the flat, and, and the Saints knock each other off, and he runs in for the winning touchdown. What a finish. Speaking of finishes, Houghton Lane 4, Margaret Burning, has taken the early lead with a 27-6. Had a good battle there. Megan Glass in lane five, right on her hip. Margaret really taking it out fast. Records held by Jenny Porcher, 20072. And Margaret is out in 58-3. She'd have to come back in a two to challenge that record. Glass out in 003. In third place, that's Lena Wall from Mason, a junior. Lucy Callard, who saw swim win the mile earlier, is out in lane three, is in fourth. Now, that's a tough double. Burning, 129.5. If she can bring it home, she's got a shot. Got to come back in, in 31, 31, 31, 2. It's going to be tight. It's got a chance. Record was set back in 2005, so it's 12 years old. And she got it. 2-0-56. That's a heck of a swim, Mike. 
That is awesome. Wow. That, that's one of the swims of the night right there. 2056. Came back in 31 flat. Margaret Burning, senior from Kettering Fairmont. Finishing second, Megan Glass, last year's 100 fly champion, state champion. So that's a great, great swim. She's pumped. Look at that. I think she surprised even herself. 2 double O. This morning she went 2.05, so dropped five seconds from her morning swim. She definitely is uh, thrilled with that swim. Now we got the boys. Boys 200 fly, heat one, lane one, Brandon Day, Loveland. Lane two, Scott Shepard, Mason. Lane three, Zach Feldmeyer, Centerville. Lane four, Owen Conley, Waynesville. Lane five, Ethan Debyak, Mason. Lane six, Nathan Buzzy, St. X. Lane seven, Michael Griffith, Troy. Lane eight, Ben Pickrell. Centerville. Owen Connolly out to the early lead. 24-9 on the first 50. And he's got about a body and a half on the field. Lane six. Nathan Bussey, St. Xavier in second. Connolly from Waynesville. Fifty-three seven. Really taking it out. Ethan Dravik is in second, a senior from Mason. Good battle for second. Now here comes Brandon Day in lane, lane one at the top of the screen, trying to get up into the hunt for the second place. But running away with this event, Consul Heat, Owen Connolly. He's got about a five body length lead. Still doing a good job with his underwaters. It's like getting a little bit tired here. Still going to have an awesome swim. Huge drop from this morning. And he went 151.96. 159 this morning, so an eight second drop. Finishing second is Bussy. 156.92. And Brandon Day surged up, got uh, third place with a 157.36. Good swim for Brandon. Good bounce back from uh, yesterday when he had a flinch on a start. A nice swim for Brandon. So we heat two, lane one, Wesley Shower, Beaver Creek. Lane two, Chet Dobson of Madera. Lane three, Ian Van Gorp, St. X. Lane four, Cody Bybee, Bellbrook. Lane five, Jean-Pierre Kuzam, St. X. Lane six, Jonah Karsnick, Williamsburg. Lane seven, Grady Wheeler, winner of the mile earlier tonight. Lane eight, Sam McCarthy. A lot of, a lot of our milers swimming the tuner fly, doubling. Brady Wheeler, an example of that. Both of our uh, winning milers. Uh, Lucy Callard doubled with the tuner fly. And you're seeing Cody Bobby coming back after his Hunter freestyle record just a few moments ago. That's a very tough double, back-to-back -back races. Bobby out to the early lead. Ian Van Gorp, lane three, right on his hip. Sean Pierre, Colson. Right there in lane five. Good race. Not 
Bobby really broke out at this meet last year. He was already strong, but he really, really stepped it up. Let's see right there, he accelerated on that fourth 25 right there, out in 52-6. The record 149-2 by David Mosco from 2007. David was a good 500 swimmer as well. And underwaters, Mike, have really developed over the last five, six, seven years. The fifth stroke. It is the fifth stroke. He's going to have to come back in 29 flat, and he's got the record, which is very probable. He's, he's cranking right here. You really have to fade not to get it. 11-year-old record. 11-year-old record. 10 years at least. 2007. Great underwater on that last, that seventh turn. And he's got it. Yes, 148-78. John Pierre finished second with a time of 152-42. Jonah Karsenik from Williamsburg, a freshman. 154-29. Very, very good swims. Well, Mike, we've had a surge on records yes, here. Yes, tonight, much better, tonight. much hotter than last night. Well, you know, as I was at the site this morning, all the coaches were saying we're swimming so much better, so much better here in day two than we were in lay one. I think the the uh, weather, things like that, may have gotten a little bit into them, but once they got settled in today, it's been great, great performances. And we'll have the girls 100 breaststroke swimming in lane one, Haley Trotter, Cincinnati Colerain. Lane two, Nami Edge of Beaver Creek. Lane three, Lauren Olson, Bishop Fenwick. Lane four, Kylie Decker, Ursuline. Lane five, Reese Lugbill, Mason. Lane six, Sophia McCarty, Dayton Oakwood. Lane seven, Abby Lockie, Springboro. Lane eight, Aaliyah Zimmerman of Centerville. Rachel Gustin, uh, who holds both 200 and also the 100 here. It went 103-11 back in 1983. Lane four, Kylie Decker hanging tough. Kylie out in 31-6. Very tight. Now here comes Haley Trotter, Cole Rain. Haley Trotter, lane one, stealing the race. And Trotter gets the victory with a time of 106.94. Finishing second, Kylie Decker. Trotter made a great, a great back half right there. And now we're going to go to an interview. Hi, we're here with Emerson Amagero from Moeller High School. He's the winner of the men's 50 butterfly. Emerson, uh, a really short race. How did you win that? Uh, just I put all my might and effort into it. Uh, since the 100 flies, like you really have to kind of pace yourself and just you got to watch how fast you're going on the first 50 and not crash. But you know, every 50 is like you just got to go all out and just uh, everything just goes. A victory for Moeller. How excited are your teammates? Oh, uh, I think they're pretty happy too. Uh, I saw everyone uh, cheering me on and just. Crowd's jumping and everything, and uh, it was pretty fun showing that. Congratulations, you're only a junior, so we expect to see more out of you next year. All right, thank you. All right, Emerson, nice job.
Heat two, lane one, Kate Overby, Marymont. Lane two, Addie Engel, Springfield Catholic Central. Lane three, Claudia Butterfield, Ursuline. Lane four, Lauren Lampy, Centerville. Lane five, Hannah Foster, St. Ursula. Lane six, Bridget Engel, Springfield Catholic Central. Lane seven, Tiana Ankrum, Mason. Lane eight, Meredith Richters. Anna Foster had a very good first underwater pullout, taking the early lead, along with Addie Engel from uh, Springfield Catholic Central. Lane two, very tight heat right there. Looks like Addie with a slight lead, lane two. And she's out in 30.64. Claudia Butterfield had a great pullout right there to come up. Even. Now here comes Lauren Lampy, our top seed this morning. And it's very tight. Looked like a slight edge right there by Claudia. And that pullout. And they're holding their stroke. It's going to come down to the timing of the touch. And Lane. Four, Lampy gets her victory with a time of 105.34. Claudia Butterfield gets second, 105.40, just six one hundredths difference on that touch. And now we go to the boys' 100 breaststroke. Right here's the finish, and very tight. Too close to call, but we know that the touch pad said lane four. Boys, 100 breaststroke, heat one, lane one, Joseph Coleman, Beaver Creek, lane two, Alex Rogers, Alter, lane three, George Eng, Seven Hills, lane four, Calvin Wise, Springfield Greenan, lane five, Vinnie Wolfram, Springboro, lane six, Michael Sander, Springboro, lane seven, Seabass Villa, Centerville, lane eight, Cameron Jones, St. X. Records held by Tommy Cope, 2015, time of 56-24. A full Pullman in lane one out very quickly with the early lead. Top of your screen. Vinnie Wolfram, lane five. Now touches with a 28 27 with the early lead. Pullman had a great pullout. No pun intended. Calvin Wise, lane four, now surging, Wolfram, lane one as well, Pullman, who's gonna get the touch? Pullman gets the victory, 59-75. Vinnie Wolfram gets second, 59-89, into the championship heat. Swimming in lane one, Tinder Sear of Seven Hills. Lane through two, Alex Wade. Lane three, Scott Sobolewski. He's, he's having a great meet. St. X, lane four, Tyler Babinek, Milford High School. Lane five, Ansel Froaz, St. X. Lane six, Nicholas Pereira, St. X. Lane seven, Griffin Manning, Lakota West. And lane eight, Dan Cashel, Walnut Hills. Fiberneck out of Milford, 58-41, our top seed this morning, a junior from. Tight first link. Straight, 
cross field is very close. Tyler taking a slight edge out in 26-74. Very quick off his walls. And holding a slight edge there still. Tyler giving chase. Scott Sobolinski. Bab Babinick. Great pull out by Tyler right there. Scott in second. And Tyler, 56-31. Wow, what a great, great swim for Tyler. Getting first, second. That was Soberlinski with a time of 57-41. And Froes gets third with a time of 58-30. Tyler just missed the record by a tenth. Margaret Burning, she's with uh, a senior at Kettering Fairmont, yep. And you just won the 200 fly with a new record. How does that feel? Um, it's awesome. I really wanted that record. Um, the girl who won it was on Raiders, so I wanted to be her record. <laughs> That's awesome, so you did a great job. How did the race feel? Um, it felt really good. I kind of easy speeded the first um, 100, and then I just went for it the last 100, so it was fun. <laughs> so is this uh, your best time, too? Um, no, I go 159, but I wasn't really looking for a best time. I just wanted to go fast. That's awesome. So what are we looking for for your uh, championship season? Um, I really want to go 158 too. There's no reason for the time. I just really like the time, so hopefully we'll see that. Awesome. And where are you uh, going to college next year? I'm going to OU. Awesome. Swimming there? Yes, of course. <laughs> good. Well, good luck and congratulations to you. Thank you. Well, now we we just missed the 50 breast during that interview. <laughs> our apologies. <laughs> that quick race was conducted during our interview. Oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, I'm nope. sorry. We're waiting to go. I'm wondering what we're. Oh, there we are. Here we are. Here we are. All right. Okay, set the field here, Mike. All right, lane one. Kirsty Harmon, lane two, Aaron Kelly, lane three, Emma Nieheisel, lane four, Sarah Hippenmeyer, lane five, Sarah Dorizas, lane eight, six, Katie Robinson, lane seven, Liz Klein, lane eight, Kara Alexander. In the early lead, lane five, Sarah Doris from Kings Mill. And a tight finish. Sarah gets the victory with a 29-73. Kira Alexander gets second, 29-91. I'm glad we did not miss that race. Yes. Okay, Mike. Very unprofessional of us. Good thing we're volunteers. Yeah. Heat two, lane one, Abby Burton, Vandalia Butler. Lane two, Ashka Shaw, Mason. Lane three, Ava Watts, Turpin. Lane four, Jenna Scarborough, Lakota West. Lane five. Molly Fisher, Lakota West. Lane six, Caitlin Clements, St. Ursula. Lane seven, Reese Turner, Springfield. Lane eight, Katie Kaminsky, Anderson. Emma Schubert holds the record, 27-32, set in 2016. Top seed this morning, Jenna Scarborough, 28-85. Start. Very tight. Lane two. Aska. Ashka. Ashka. 
Very tight. Too close to call. It's going to come right down to the finish. Lane's three and four. Now lane three pulling ahead. Eva Watt. And Eva Watt gets the victory. 28-40. Jenna Scarbor, our top seed, finishes second. 28-65. And now we're to the collegiate 200 backstroke event. I'm sorry, the boys, uh, boys 50, 50 back. back. You're getting ahead of yourself. Yes, I All am. All the excitement. All the excitement. Heat one, lane one, Deki Nishikawa, Mason. Lane two, Kono Kellner. Lane three, William Kelly, Waynesville. Lane four, Ryan Hunt, Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. Lane five, Brian Ridner, St. X. Lane six, Eric Gunther, St. X. Lane seven, Joey Kelly, Lakota East. And lane eight, Adam Lamping, freshman, St. Xavier. Lane two, Connell Kellner. Oh, we have a tie. We have a tie. Brian Ryder, Redner, and Joey Kelly. Both went 27 18. 27 18. Now to the championship final heat. Heat two, lane one, Jamie Donovan, St. X. Lane two, Justin Parrott, Northmont. Lane three, Jack Putnick, St. X. Lane four, Tristan Menninger, St. X. Lane five, Aki Lee, St. X. Lane six, Zachary Soreen, Lakota West. Lane seven, Alex Gow, Mason. Lane eight, Drew Morstadt, St. X. Turn together. Lane six, a slight edge. Zachary Saran. Dakota West. They come down to the fin. And Zachary gets the win. 25-71. 25-71. And Randy Kruger's record hangs in there. One more year. 25-59. All the way back from 1991. 1991. Oh, uh, the great Larry Lyons who coached Randy. Yes, he wasn't happy that he swam that race. No, he was not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back 200, in the day. 200 back. Heat one, lane one, Emma Fortman of Madeira. Lane two, Caitlin Basic of Beaver Creek. Lane three, Amanda Paxson of Ursuline Academy. Lane four, Pruitt Walter, Centerville. Lane five, Avery McCarthy, Beaver Creek. Lane six, Corinne Baber, Kings. Lane seven, Peyton Farrell, Beaver Creek, and lane eight, Emma Swab, Brookville. The record was set last year by Peyton Kiner, Cincinnati Christian, 59-30. One of many records that were set last year. And we've started to hit some records this evening, Mike. Yes, tonight's been a little hotter with the records. A little uh, bit nice hotter. to see them fall. We didn't have any, I don't believe we had any individual records uh, last night. We had some relay records. And we had a relay last night, but tonight we've had three, I believe. Yeah. And, a, and uh, two individual, one relay, I believe. Or two relays? No. That's not the way we had. No, two, well, four, Bobby then. broke both of his. And then and we, we had, had the tuner flyer. Right. Also get her, break, her record. Margaret Burning with a great 31 second last 50 to break that record. 
And out early, McCarthy, 101-80, followed by Emma Schwab, 102-49. a good shot right there. Pruitt Walter, Centerville, lane four. Now here comes Amanda Pax Paxton, Paxton, freshman, Ursuline. McCarthy still holding the edge, 135-9 at the 150 mark. It's a tight race. Let's see who's got the last 50. Emma Schwab up in lane eight, surged ahead right there. Tight, lane four. Foot. And it's gonna be lane four getting the victory. Really brought it home. And a time of 208.13. Last 50, 32-2. Emma Schwab gets second. 209.19 and to the championship final. Serving in the championship final, lane one, Chloe Dunseith, St. Ursula. Lane two, Emma Schubert, Seven Hills. Lane three, Brenna Wolf, Kings Mills. Lane four, Maggie Clough, Springboro. Lane seven, Nicola Lane, Centerville. Lane six, sorry, lane five, Nicola Lane. Lane six, Madeline Kenyon, Dayton Oakwood. Lane seven, Lauren Thomas, Mason. And lane eight, Issa All, Dayton Oakwood. Lakota West, and you just won the 50 backstroke, right? How'd that feel? It felt amazing, and I gotta thank my parents for getting me this far. Without them, I couldn't have made it here at all. That's awesome. So this is a pretty big accomplishment then tonight, yeah? Yeah, a very big accomplishment for me. So swimming, like you've been swimming all your life, or you just started recently, or what? Uh, I've been swimming most of my life. Um, I took a break. Not too long ago, but I came back and swam. So it sounds like you're really on a strong streak and you're doing well, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. So what are you looking for for your championship season? Uh, I mean, just better swim, better splits, and hopefully qualifying for state. Awesome. Good luck and congratulations tonight. Thank you. Okay, we're set to start. Get underwaters. Maggie Clough up to the early lead, lane four. Okay, Maggie turns at 28-2. Followed by Nicola. Nicola Lane in lane five, 28-4. Maggie still holding the lead right there, about a half a body length ahead. Lane giving chase. And pulling away, 58-2. I have to come back in 101 to have a shot at the record. Lane in second. Now in third, Emma Schubert, Seven Hills Junior in lane two, trying to get up for second. But this is Maggie Clough's race, and she is at 29-8. She'd have to come back in 28-5 to get the record. And the battle for second's pretty tight, but the victory is going to go to Maggie. Maggie Clough, she is well ahead, five body lengths, a great swim. 
and be just off the record with a time of 201.50. Very strong swim. And Madeline Kenyon gets second with a time of 207.17. Emma Schubert gets third, 207.85. And now to the men's tuner backstroke. Men's 200 backstroke, heat one, lane one, Brandon Day of Loveland. Lane two, Michael Lorenz, Lakota West. Lane three, Will Osterman, St. Xavier. Lane four, Aaron Sequira, Walnut Hills. Lane five, Ian Leininger, Beaver Creek. Lane six, Luke Lehman, Dayton Carroll. Lane seven, Zach Feldmeyer, Centerville. Lane eight, Austin Smith of Elder. Taking it out very fast. Aaron Shapiro, lane four. Followed by Will Osterman. Lane three. Aaron with a commanding lead. See right there at the, at the middle of your screen. Aaron from Walnut Hills is a sophomore. Now coming up in lane five. Ian Lingager, Beaver Creek sophomore. Aaron's out in 54-4. It's a tight race for Third, Will Osterman and Brandon Day. Lanes three and one, respectively. Aaron, 123.9. One, one Aaron's in control. Gonna win this race. A couple of body lengths. Like Ian's going to get second. Let's see what the times are here. Very good swims. Aaron 153.66. Ian finishes 155.60. Will Osterman was third. 157.18. Brandon Day 157.48. Lane one finishes fourth. Heat two, lane one, Owen Conley, Waynesville. Lane two, Jonathan Bernard, St. X. Lane three, Noah Young, Kings. Lane four, Connor Black, Dayton Carroll. Lane five, Justin Grender, St. X. Lane six, Greg Kalen, Seven Hills. Lane seven, Kevin Liebel, Arch Archbishop Alter. And lane eight, John Sampson, Bellbrook. Broken last year, 148.06 by John Sampson of Bellbrook. He's in lane eight. Let's we'll see if he can duplicate his swim from last year. We've got Justin Grinder in lane five and Connor Blatt in the middle of the pool. Both went 52 and 53. This morning, it'll be interesting. John Sampson, our rec record holder, out in lane, lane eight. Justin Grinder taking it out well. 24-68. Looks 
like it's Justin's race tonight. He is going out after it. Now this record's going to fall. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the record's this got record's to gonna fall. jeopardy. 51-24 going out by Justin. It's a battle in second. John Sampson up in lane eight, as well as uh, Owen Conley in lane one. Two outside lanes battling. Justin. All Justin has to do is come back under 30. He just went 27-5, so he will own the new record. Two bookends battling for second and also in lane three, Noah Young from Kings Mill trying to get up for second. And the new record's going to be 145.69. That is about as big of a drop on a 200 record that we've had in a number of years. Three Dropping seconds. almost two and a half seconds. Finishing second was Conley with a time of 148.44, just off the record. And Young gets third with a time of 49.84. And we're to an interview. Kate Lair, a sophomore at Artificial Altar, is back with us, a double winner at this classic meet. Congratulations. Thank you. Kate has won the 200 IM as well as the 400 IM. The 200 IM was a little tighter for you tonight. Yeah, I trained more for the 4 IM, so the 2 IM I was happy with. You were neck and neck coming in through the freestyle. Yeah. What brought you home? Well, I just kind of put my head down and went as fast as I could. I'm surprised. I'm very glad, though. Yeah, it was good. So your second year on the team, Yes. the Classic's coming to a close. What are your thoughts as you finish up this meet? I'm just thankful for all my teammates and coaches and family for like working with me all the time. And shout out to Alter and Lourdes Lambert for that. Yeah. Congratulations, I know they're proud of you as well. Yes, thank you. And we are the final girls event of the evening, the girls 400 freestyle relay, swimming in lane one, Seven Hills, lane two, Wyoming, lane three, Marymont, lane four, Beaver Creek, lane five, Lakota West, lane six, Walnut Hills, lane seven, Lakota East, and lane eight, Cincinnati Seton. And Marymont out to the early lead. And 53 2 leaning off there. That was Laney Newman. And now we have Kate Oberbay. And as you see her coming in there to the turn, up in lane one, Seven Hills. Jocelyn Spanbarrow, Bauer, in second. And we're going to go to an interview. Just won the 100 breaststroke. How does that feel? It feels great. Really unexpected. Yeah. So this is something you've probably been training for for a while. Yeah, yeah it's my favorite event. Awesome. Have you been swimming it all through high school? No. No? Uh, what was your stroke before that? Uh, I've kind of done backstroke, but definitely breast back. But now, now it's breaststroke all the way. Right? It's definitely breaststroke. Yeah. So what are you looking for to, um, for the championship season? Personal best. Yeah. Hope we make it to state. Awesome. And this is your first time winning the classic. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations and Thank good luck. You. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and we're back to the race. Marymont is still leading. And the anchor leg is going to be Cora Dupree, our 100 champion. And no one's going to
going to catch her. So let's see who's going to get up for second place. We have a very tight race between Seven Hills, Wyoming, Beaver Creek, and Lakota West. Just outside Lakota, Lakota East, no, Walnut Hills. And Marymont's going to handily win the consolation heat. Okay, 332.17. That would have seated them first this morning. So uh, that's why you got to do it in the morning. Beaver Creek gets second, 342.08. And a tie, Seven Hills, 342.08. Finish second and second. Right there, a tie. And now we go to the championship heat. Lane one, Springboro. Lane two, Ursuline Academy. Lane three, St. Ursula. Lane four, Kings. Lane five, Centerville. Lane six, Mason. Lane seven, Turpin. And lane eight, Oakwood. Kings had our top seed this morning. 336.86. The record held by Mason in 2016, 329.61. Looks like we're going. Okay, we're going to go to an interview here in a moment as we make these introductions. Kayla McCabas is a senior at Princeton High School and she's the winner of the 50 Butterfly. How do you prepare for such a short, fast race? Um, just work on starts, quick starts, and quick um, turns and finishes. So the victory for Princeton tonight, what does that mean for you and your teammates? Um, it means a lot. I was actually the only person, um, only girl to make it back for Princeton. So <laughs> I'm proud. And as a senior, talk about this, your last classic meet. Oh, it feels great. This is my favorite event um, through the whole high school swimming. So I'm going to miss it next year. Well, congratulations and good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you. Okay, and the final Heat Head Championship Heat has started. And we got a lane six, Walnut Hills, Emma, let's see, I'm um, sorry, Mason. Hunter Mesowak. Mason with the early lead giving chase. Ursuline Academy in lane three. Ashley Borkendine. Borkendine. Ashley Borkendine. Kings Mill, Leah Lockett. Mason. Slight edge, 52-4. Kings in second, 52-8. Followed by St. Ursula, 53-3. Mason still holding the lead. Kira Ankrum. There she is. You see her? Kira Ankrum. Allison Blowbomb just went in for Mason. Lane three, that's Meredith Mullering. St. Ursula. Kings Mill has Corinne. Barber in the water. Blood bomb. 
still holding the lead for Mason. Very tight race for second. And now St. Ursula Mollering has pushed ahead a second, trying to catch with Mason. Mason's anchor. Deanna Wall is still holding that lead. St. Ursula, Hannah Forster coming up. Mason's still leading right there in the bottom of your screen. It looks like they're going to hang on. Second place is going to go to St. Ursula. Third place to Kings Mill. Mason holds the record, 329-61. They're going to get the victory. And just, and they got the record, 329.05, just under the record. St. Ursula, 330.89. And in third place, Kings, 332.71. So three great, great relays right there, Mike. They are very strong. That was awesome. Good way to end the girls' meet. Meet, meet finished great today. Yeah, this is really hot. They're hot swims, a lot of hot swimmers tonight. Really a much uh, better, better session. Much better session. Got the weather out of our system. Yes. And we got more swimmers here. Yeah, you got a few <laughs> more swimmers back from some other meets. Boys, 400 freestyle relay. Lane one, Indian Hill. Lane two, Lakota West. Lane three, Vandalia Butler. Lane four, Walnut Hills. Lane five, Kings. Lane six, Beaver Creek. Lane seven, Turpin. Lane eight, Oxford, Talawanda. Creek went out in 23-7. Dawson Lutz. Indian Hill, lane one at top. Sam Oakham goes in. A Walnut and Hills was, in second, uh, Isaiah Valentine, 49-31. Now Walnut Hills coming up. Alex Kraft. Beaver Creek still holding a slight edge. A tight race right there. Four, five, six, all flipping together. Walnut Hills, Kings, and Beaver Creek. And let's watch these exchanges. So much can be gained off of a great relay start. There's a good one right there in lane six. Ian Linger. Linger. Very tight race. Dan Castle in the water for Walnut Hills. Cashel's had a great meet, and he has now taken the lead. As Walnut has surged ahead. Aaron Sequeira, who's had a very good meet. Good start out of Walnut Hills, followed by Kings, and then Beaver Creek. Indian Hill, that's Devin Edwards, lane one, trying to get up there for third. And solidly in fourth. 
Walnut Hills running away with the heat now. Here's where he's had a good meet. 22-4 on that split. Races for second between Beaver Creek and Kings. And Beaver Creek just hammering. They're going to get second. Walnut, Walnut Hills is going to win the consolation heat. Let's see what their time was. This morning they went 3.20. They're going to crush that time. 3.13.20 for Walnut Hills. Beaver Creek finishes second with a third. 314.61. And Kings third, 317.98. And now we go to the championship final. Swimming in lane one, Seven Hills. Lane two, Bellbrook. Lane three, Sycamore. Lane four, St. Xavier. Lane five, Mason. Lane six, Muller. Lane seven, Centerville. Lane eight, Milford. And the record. Set last year, 3-0-52. Leibson, Sobolinski, Grinder, and, and House. 3-0-52, Mike. That is a that was the uh, that was the big swim of the year of the meet last that, year. Yeah, that's that's pretty fast. It wasn't that long ago that that was the national record. Well, okay, not that long ago for you and me. Lucky. Uh, that was we got lucky. our, was we got our meet record holder in lane two, Bobby, right in front of us here. Uh, a little crooked on his start there. Very fortunate no one was they didn't just start that race and have a DQ on that. That yeah. was that started have really a fair safe. Start. The starter well, Bobby out to the early lead. And he is cranking. He's out in 21-8. Commanding lead, Savior in second. Shepakitis be going second for Savior. And uh, Cam Bybee, a freshman, obviously a younger brother. Trying to hold off Shepakitis. So Bellbrook out to the early lead. St. Xavier giving chase. Third place, that looks like Sycamore in lane three. And Xavier has now taken the lead. And the younger Bybee is holding on to second. Sycamore coming up, trying to get third. Looking to challenge for second. Shepakitis is out in 21-6 off that relay pickup. Nicholas Pereira in the water now for Savior leading. Sycamore in second. And Sycamore, that is um, Eric Menchenhofer. Menchhofer. Good battle for second. Here comes lanes five and six. That would be Mason and Moeller climbing up into the game. Savior's going to handily win this race. And the anchor leg for, May, for uh, St. Xavier is Justin Grinder. A clean start. And let's see. Have to come back in 42 to break the record. So we did see a 1964 split last night. Date of Mike's birth, which you'll always remember now. This results will be unofficial. There may be a, a uh, break in the relays. Aggressive start last night. We'll see if there was a call. And 302.93. That is a great, great swim. 
Lane two, Sycamore. Or lane three, Sycamore gets second. 309, 818. Followed by Moeller. Moeller. 311, 90 for Moeller to get third. So that concludes tonight's exciting finals. Uh, looks like we have a few interviews. Go on over. Yeah, we have a few believe interviews we to go to end up the evening. Interviews. So as soon as, as they get set up, up let's, talk, night. let's talk about the night. Much better night. I was, I, I mean, last night was strong, but not nearly as strong what we're used to. Tonight, right, right. Back, in, back in form, back to form. And, records, and it, re relay records, individual records. It showed this morning. I thought the swims this morning were better. I do believe the weather uh, sort of put people off their game a little bit, a little bit uh, lack of focus in that area yesterday. But tonight, everything was back in normal stead, and we had three individual records, two by Bobby. And now we're going to go to an interview. Ava Waz is a freshman at Turpin. She's the winner of the 50 backstroke. Congratulations. Thank you. What does it mean to win as a freshman here? It's just, I don't know, I can't really like, comprehend it. It's just exciting. Yeah. So this is your first classic. What do you know about the meet and how excited are you to be here? I just know that it's like the biggest meet in the country and it's very exciting. The, like, the environment's very, like, exciting and what what are your goals for the rest of the season here um i want to make it back in the second heat for most of my events and probably win my 100 free yeah. well congratulations you're off to a great start thank you okay and we're back mike i also uh breaking a record margaret burning the 200 fly record which was an outstanding swim came home 30 point 31 flat. That was a great swim. And that record was uh, set in 2005 by Jenny Forster, a great swimmer back in the day. And so those records uh, really capped off tonight's uh, format. Some outstanding relays. And I think we look good heading into the championship phase of the season. Conference meets are three weeks out. Section District State Tournament, four, five, and six. It is on. After, I always think of this as kind of being on now. It this is. is it right is around on. the corner, all the championship, high school championships, then the club championships after that. we go to another interview with, with Coach Meredith Griffin. Maggie Clow is a sophomore, and you won the 200 backstroke by six seconds. Yes. It's a wide margin. <laughs> yes. Tell us about that race. Um, I, uh, I don't know. It's... I just went into it and I thought, I was like really stressing beforehand because I swam the 2IM, which isn't super fun, but, <laughs> but um, so I was, I was just like thinking and then like my friend came up to me actually and she was like, like uh, you're gonna do great, like just like focus on your walls and I think that like really helped and I don't know, I was just really feeling it. <laughs> A big win for Springboro. Congratulations. What does that mean for your team? Um, I hope that there are more soon. <laughs> um, I hope to maybe win the 100 back and have other people win alongside me because that would be amazing. Well, a great start. You've got two more years here at the Classic. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> job, okay, we're back, Mike. Let's let's see the replay. This is the takeoff on the. Here we go. Okay, that looked pretty solid to me. I don't see anything there. Do you see anything there, Mike? I didn't see anything either. Yeah. Well, we we're. Uh, not on the deck. It was there. What, what call was made? Do we know for sure whether there was a call? Uh, no, I said it was very fortunate because right before that, there was a little movement and the starter saved them okay. like saying stand up. So, yes, and then the, the uh, reset looked clean. And I think we had a first start. Okay, we'll take one more look. It was uh, lane four. 
Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's a safe it. start. Yeah, yeah. It was the one before I was talking yeah. about earlier. That was yeah. very no, fortunate. No. They started at a great job releasing right. the heat. If Re they had hit the button, as, if they had hit the button, then um, it would have been a problem because there was a little flinching yeah. movement up there. Now that, that's uh, say next too. That's, lead a, off. that's a good way of uh, getting it right. It was Ansel, setting him back up. Ansel Froas, and, and, and he kind of shrugged his shoulders and kind of jumped his shoulders. But the starter said, "Stand up." He was cleared, no issue whatsoever. Very so good. It, that Very was a good, good job by the official. And now we've got one more interview, I believe. Yeah, we're getting ready for that. And you can see the crowd. It was a great crowd tonight. A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement. And um, you're milling about as they, they get ready to head home. Everybody drive safely, and we're going to have an interview. I'm with I'm with Tyler Babnick. You're a sophomore? Junior. Junior, sorry, uh, from Milford. Just won the 100 breast. Yes, ma'am. And how'd that feel? Um, it was pretty tiring. It was a good race. Um, I was trying to go out fast and, and be able to bring it home fast, too. So it was a... Uh, it was tiring, but uh, surprisingly fast for this point of the season. Sure, and it's always a great uh, feeling to win at the Classic. Yes. yes, it is. A lot of tough competition, and you did very well tonight. Well, so. Thank you very much. Yeah, those guys were very, very fast. Um, I mean, Scott was a, a great competitor in the two breast. He uh, was flying in that uh, 201. That was really, really good. And I was able to be in there with him for a little while. So, But that 100 breast, it was good to get, be up there and get up there and race them, uh, as long with those, those other guys. It was all, really awesome. That's awesome. Congrats. And, and what are you looking for for the championship season then? Um, well, I really want to uh, um, play super high at state, um, obviously. Top five, top three even um, would be fantastic. Um, Jason Matthews is a big guy for me to look out to and, and try and try and be up to up there with him. So that's awesome. what's awesome. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing you at the state meet. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. All right. Good job. Congrats. Great job. Let's see that start one more time. I think we've got the earlier reset. Yes, is the earlier reset what I was talking about? And a flash, flash here from the bottom right hand, right yep. there. Yeah, and that caused the flinch. That caused the flinch, and that caused the starter to. to luckily, the starter did not hit the the start button at that time and said stand up and then everything was clear they just kind of let things settle down and you know rule 101 at a swim meet no, no flash, flash photography, photography in the right. stands let that be something that everyone pays attention yes. to in the future all right well that well, concludes our coverage of this year's classic uh the uh 2018 classic finals is an exclusive presentation of weight cross sports for the entire Waycross sports team, I'm Mike Leonard, Benson Sperling, Coach Meredith Griffin, and April Curley. Good night from the Classic. Good night. Waycross coverage of the 2018 Southwest Ohio Swim Classic, made possible by the Cincinnati Auto Expo, SwimMeet.com, Mason Swimming Boosters, and the Seven Hills School.